are gathering together today for the power and the arm of the Lord. And I pray that the hand of the Lord and his son will be strong and mighty in your life in Jesus' name. And the people of God said, Father, we bless your name today. We thank you because we know you are mightily present here. We thank you for all the ministrations we have got. And we're asking, Lord, to confirm your word in every life in Jesus' name. Manifest your power. Reveal your hand. Let your mighty power, wonders, signs, and miracles take place in every life in Jesus' name. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. From Isaiah chapter 53, I'm reading from verse 1. Isaiah chapter 53, verse 1. Who has believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? There you find that the arm of the Lord can be revealed. But some based on the condition that you believe the report, you believe the message, you believe the revelation. That's why it says, who has believed? Anyone there? Anyone beyond? Anyone today? Anyone in the past? Anyone in the future? Whoever believes the report, the revelation, the word, the message, the arm of the Lord will be revealed. The children of Israel were wondering, how is it what they saw in the past? They were not seen at that time. How is it the arm of the Lord, the power of the Lord was not being revealed unto them? I said chapter 59, I'm reading from verse 1. I said chapter 59, verse 1, behold, the Lord's hand. The same thing, his hand, his might, his power, his arm. Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened, that it cannot save, neither is ear heavy, that ye cannot hear. But your iniquities have separated between you and your God, and your sins have hid this face from you that he will not hear. What's the prophet revealing to them? What's the Bible revealing to us? God's arm is strong and mighty, powerful and supernatural. God's arm is irresistible and unconquerable. God's arm, God's might, God's power is creative and liberating. God's hand, God's arm is redemptive and healing. His arm saves, that arm delivers, that arm heals, that mighty power might is arm works miracles, that arm works wonders. It gives us answers to prayer. It lifts up, breaks yokes, and it does marvelous things in our lives. Yet that arm is activated by our repentance. That arm is activated by our relationship. That arm is activated by righteousness. Repentance and faith lead to forgiveness and to reconciliation, and to conversion, and to sonship, then we have eternal life, abundant life, spiritual life, indeed all things pertaining to life and godliness here on earth and hereafter in heaven. But you see, that arm of the Lord will be activated in your life when you turn away from Satan, you turn away from the world, you turn away from darkness, and you turn 
unto the Lord. Ezekiel chapter 20, verse 33. Ezekiel chapter 20, verse 33. As I live, says the Lord God, surely with a mighty hand and with a stretch out arm and with fury poured out, will I rule over you. I will bring you out from the people and gather you out of the countries wherein ye are scattered with a mighty hand and with a stretch out arm and with fury poured out. That is, when he brings his mighty power, his mighty hand upon you, all those things that held you captive in the past, all those powers that held you down, He'll pour his fury upon them. Yeah. And then in verse 35, and I will bring you into the wilderness of the people, and I will plead with you face to face. Like as I pleaded with your fathers in the wilderness of the land of Egypt, so will I plead with you, says the Lord God, and I will cause you to pass under the rod. And I will bring you into the bond of the covenant. And I will purge out from among you the rebels. And them that transgress against me, I will bring them forth out of the countries where they sojourn. And they shall not enter into the land of Israel. And ye shall know that I am the Lord. You will know him. You will see his power. You will see his arm, his great arm, his high arm, his unfailing arm, his arm that is able to deliver you. Acts of the Apostles chapter 13. Acts chapter 13. I'm reading from verse 17. The Lord God of these people of Israel chose our fathers and exalted the people when they dwelt as strangers in the land of Egypt. Listen to this. And with an high arm brought he them out of it. And remember, God says, I am God. I change not. His arm is still mighty today. His power is still mighty today. And that arm and that power is ready to deliver you. Amen. 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 We're looking at the message, activating God's mighty arm through genuine repentance. The arm of the Lord might have been dormant in your life inactive in your life, unoperative in your life. The Lord might have been quiet and silent in your life, and you are wondering, they say, the Bible says that the arm of the Lord is mighty and strong, powerful, irresistible, able to heal, able to deliver, able to save, able to set free, and yet, I cannot see the activating or the moving or the operating of that mighty arm. There is one secret. That's the secret we are getting today. That power will work in your life. Pray. You will pray. I will pray. And as our prayer meets together, there's going to be an explosion in your life. Yeah. Somebody there, explosion. Yeah. The explosion, the explosive power of God in your life today, in Jesus' name. Yeah. You're going to activate the mighty hand of God. We're going to activate the mighty hand of God. There's going to be repentance all across the auditorium. Everywhere, total repentance. There is no compromise with Satan today. There is no compromise with sin today. There is no compromise with society today. 
and as we turn en mass in our thousands unto the Lord, whatever we open our mouth to decree, it must happen. Three things. Number one, the beginning of times of refreshing from heaven. The beginning of times of refreshing from heaven. Number two, the blessing of true repentance from the heart. Repentance not from the head. Repentance not from the lips. Repentance not from the mouth. Repentance from the heart. The blessing of true repentance from the heart. Number three, the bringing forth of transparent righteousness and true holiness. The bringing forth of transparent righteousness and true holiness. Number one, tell me number one. If there's a beginning in your life, I say, tell me your own number one. The beginning of times of refreshing from heaven. We're looking at Acts chapter 3, verse 19. The beginning. How does refreshing begin? How does a new day, a great day, how does miracle begin? How do signs and wonders begin? How does the rain from heaven begin? Look at chapter 3, Acts chapter 3, verse 19. Repent ye therefore and be converted. Look at this. That your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. It says, this is how times of refreshing begin. Before that time, we need. Before that time, we're going through times of dryness, times of weariness. We have sorrow. We have suffering. We're going through some wilderness, the wilderness of famine. The wilderness of poverty, the wilderness of sickness, the wilderness of oppression. There is confusion almost everywhere, and there are torments. We need a change, a change of season from guilt to grace, from condemnation to the abundance of the blessings of the Lord from the accusation of the enemy and from the evil oppression of the wicked one. We need a release. We need redemption. We need the overflowing, refreshing power, grace of God in our lives. We're asking for a change of season, a change of stage, a change of status, so that Every stress and distress, every pressure and depression will be taken away. And this is the day. We're going to exchange the wilderness for the fresh and refreshing season of life. And then the Bible tells us in that verse I read to you, it begins with repentance. Look at verse 19 again, Acts chapter 3. Repent ye therefore and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out. When you repent, the sins are cleansed up, blotted out, erased from the record that it is not seen against you anymore. God forgives, God forgets, and God sets you free. Repent ye therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out, and then the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. Repentance is turning away from sin. Repentance is forsaking all our sins 
and you hate those seeds, like you hate anything that brought famine to your life. You hate anything that brought poverty to your life. You hate anything that brought depression, sickness, agony, anxiety, evil into your life. And now you have the sweet, refreshing time of the Lord. Isaiah chapter 28. Isaiah chapter 28. We're looking at verse 12. I said, chapter 28, verse 12, to whom he said, This is the rest wherewith ye may cause the weary to rest. When that time of refreshing comes, all your anxiety is gone, all your restlessness is gone. And the weariness of life, the dreariness of life, everything is taken away. It causes the weary to rest. This is the refreshing. This is the refreshing. That refreshing will come. Job chapter 33, verse 25. In Job chapter 33, verse 25, here is the refreshing we're talking about. Look at this, verse 25, Job chapter 33. His flesh shall be fresher than the child's. He shall return to the days of his youth. Days when there was no sickness, you are returning to those days. No failure, you are returning to those days. No fear, no anxiety as a youth just growing up. And he has not gone through all these uh, problems of life. All those problems of life you are going to forget in Jesus' name. His flesh shall be fresher than the child. All the things that has come to, de uh, to deform you and to change your skin, almost like the skin of a crocodile. Today, 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 a refreshing will come in Jesus' name. And then you are going to return. To return to the days of joy, the days of happiness, the days of excitement, the days of abundant life, and the refreshing of heaven will come upon your life in Jesus' name. How does that come? What's the beginning of the times of refreshing? Go back to verse 23. If there be a messenger with him, an interpreter, one among a thousand to show unto man his uprightness. You know, if there's no interpreter in our lives, no one that can read the word of God and interpret the word, interpret our lives, interpret all the things happening to us, interpret all the confusion that is happening to us. If there's no interpreter, a messenger from heaven that will interpret the word and match it with our lives, we we'll just continue that weary life, that dreary life, that dry life, that miserable life. But if there is a messenger, an interpreter, one among a thousand to show man his uprightness. Verse 24, then he is gracious unto him and said, deliver him from going to the pit. I have found a ransom. His flesh shall be fresher than a child's. He shall return to the days of his youth. Good old days, you are returning there. Yeah. Marvelous, wonderful days of the past, you are returning there. Yeah. I, want you now, I want you to think now, think now, be very serious now. Think of the best day, the best period of your life in the past. Think, think, think of the best period of your life. No fear, no anxiety, no sickness, no oppression, no backward thinking. And your thought, I can climb every mountain. I can subdue any problem. I can face 
any foe. I can meet every challenge. You didn't know any opposition. You didn't know any retardation. You didn't know anything that could get you down. Think of the best period in your life. That's what the Lord is saying. You are returning to that period. You return to the days of your youth. And then look at verse 26. He shall pray unto God and he will be favorable unto him. What are you? Today, God's favor will come upon you. God's mercy will come upon you. You will forget the mystery of the past, the suffering of the past, the disappointments of the past. That's what we're talking about. The times of refreshing coming in from heaven. He shall pray unto God, and he will be favorable unto him. He shall see his face with joy. For he will render unto man his righteousness. But look at this, look at this, verse 27. He looketh upon men. If any say, I have sinned and perverted that which was right, and it profited me nothing. He said, he's waiting for repentance. If any will come and he says, I want today to be the beginning of times of refreshing in my life, times of refreshing in my family, times of refreshing in the work I do, your business, your profession, your academic work, everything you are doing from today, there's a turning around. And he's waiting. He says, the times of refreshing will come. Your relationship with people around you. Looks like everybody wants to hinder you, wants to stop you from today. All those hindrances are taken out of the way. You turn over here, help is waiting for you there. You go back home, help is waiting for you there. Somebody, they will be competing to help you. It's my turn. It's my turn to help him. It's my turn to help her. Let me do it now. Let me do no, it. No, me, I will do it today. They'll be competing to help you in Jesus' name. But to see the condition, if any say, I have sinned and perverted that which was right, and it profited me not, he will deliver his soul from going to the pit. Let me say to you directly, he will deliver your soul from going into the pit. And your life shall see the light. Your life shall see the light. Your family shall see the light. Today, darkness will vanish away in Jesus' name. Job chapter 11. Job chapter 11. And I'm reading from verse 13. Job 11, verse 13. If thou prepare thine heart and stretch out thine hands toward him, if iniquity be in thine hand, put it far away. And let not wickedness dwell in your tabernacles. That's repentance. For then, after that repentance, because that will be the beginning of times of refreshing from heaven, then thou shalt lift up thy face without spot. Yea, thou shalt be steadfast and shalt not fear. Because thou shalt forget thy misery. And remember it as waters that pass away. Thine the age shall be clearer than the known day. Thou shalt shine forth, and thou shalt be as the morning. Who is that? I said, who is that? A new day must come. A refreshing time must come. 
sweating and sweating and getting nothing is going to stop today. A new light, a new refreshing, a new blessing upon your life on one condition, repentance. Look at Job chapter 22. Job chapter 22. Reading from verse 21. Acquaint now thyself with him and be at peace. Thereby good shall come unto thee. Goodness and mercy will follow you. Yeah. Everywhere you go, that hanging evil spirit, that hanging tormenting spirit, that voice always telling you something bad is going to happen, they're driven away. Yeah. On the basis of repentance, look at this, receive, I pray you, the law from his mouth. Lay up his word in thine heart. If thou return to the Almighty, thou shalt be built up. Thou shalt put away, tell me, iniquity far from thy tabernacles. You see that? It's repentance. You put away iniquity from your life, from your family, from your tabernacle, what will follow? Verse 24. I'm waiting for you. Are you there? Yeah. What's the first word there? Yeah. Then, after that repentance, after that turning, I see beauty coming upon your life. Yeah. Then shalt thou lay up gold as dust. Yeah. Poverty is gone. The gold of offer as the stones of the brooks. Yea, the Almighty shall be thy defense. And thou shalt have scarcity of silver. Thou shalt have plenty of silver. Put your hand in your pocket. If there is nothing there now, God will fill up that pocket. In your pause, there's something, there's nothing there now, God will fill that pause. That card, put it in now. And then as you put it in, ah, I thought money was there, I am sorry. You will not be sorry again. Plenty is coming there. You see, the people that do not repent and they are staying far away from God, they are hurting themselves. But the people that repent, the people that turn away from sin, times of refreshing will come upon your life. It says, Thou shalt have plenty of silver. Verse 26, For then... Thou shalt have thy delight in the Almighty and shall lift up thy face unto God. Verse 27, thou shalt make thy prayer unto him. What will happen? And he shall hear thee and thou shalt pay thy vows. Verse 28, read it yourself. I said read it yourself. You know, it, they, 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 you, are now, you are now the one to make the decree. Enemies will not make a decree in your life. Yeah. Satan will not make a decree in your life. Yeah. What do you want? What are you asking for? What are you looking for? How do you want your life to be? God is giving you a fresh sheet of paper. And he's saying, whatever has happened in your history, look at everything that has happened in your life. That one, cancel that one. Cancel that one. Cancel that one. Turn the paper. That paper now is fresh and free and neat. Write whatever you want. How do you want your life to be? How do you want your tomorrow to be? 
how do you want your destiny to be? It says, write it. And then at the end, sign your name. I take it as a decree. Yeah. It will happen. Yeah. I said it will happen. Yeah. Wipe away those tears. Because you are crying because of the past. And that past is cancelled. You are crying because of the sorrow of the past, the pain of the past, and the evil of the past, and the agony of the past, and the enmity of your enemies of the past, hostility of the past. Look at me, look at me. We are not looking at you like yesterday now. Cancel that thing. Because, verse 28, thou shalt decree a thing, and it shall be established unto thee. And the light shall shine upon thy ways. I thought the people of God will say, Amen. The beginning. Today is the beginning of the times of refreshing from heaven. Point number two. In point number two, the blessing of true repentance from the heart. That's the important thing now. You know, some people say, I've repented, I've repented. I don't know why the times of refreshing are not there. I will not contradict you, but I will show you what repentance is, and then you'll be able to measure it yourself. If you have not repented well in the past, by yourself, Today, you are going to bring forth true repentance. In anticipation of the refreshing time that is coming upon your life. We're looking at Joel, Joel chapter 2. In Joel chapter 2, I read from verse 12. Verse 12, therefore, also now says the Lord, turn ye even to me with all your heart, with fasting and weeping and mourning. Turn to me. That's repentance. And it says, not in your mind, not in your thought, not like a proposal, not like a future thing. Do it from the depth of your heart. Verse 13. Rend your heart, not your garments. Turn unto the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and of great kindness, and repenteth him of the evil. As you turn, what will happen? Verse 21. You turn, you repent. What blessing are you expecting? Verse 21. Fear not, O lands, be glad and rejoice. For the Lord will do great things. Yeah. After repentance, it's automatic. It's straightforward. If you repent from the heart, since you are going to repent from the heart, today, tomorrow, this week, this month, for the rest of the year, for the rest of your life, fear not. The fears of the past are cancelled. What's going to happen to me tomorrow? Fear not. I'm going for that interview. What's going to happen? Fear not. I'm looking at the end of the month. How am I going to pay for this and pay for that? Fear not. All you need is repentance. And with that relationship with the Lord, fear not. Be glad, rejoice, for the Lord will do great things. Be not afraid, verse 22, ye beasts of the field, for the pastures of the wilderness do spring, for the tree beareth a fruit, and the fig tree and the vine tree you do yield their strength. Every tree your life will blossom. Be glad then, Ye children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God, for he has given you the former rain moderately, 
and it will cause to come down for you. For you. For me. The rain, the former rain and the latter rain in the first month. And the floors shall be full of wheat. And the vat shall overflow with wine and oil. And I will restore to you the years that the locusts have eaten. The canker worm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm, my great army, which I sent among you. And ye shall eat in plenty. And ye shall eat in plenty. And be satisfied. You'll get enough and more than enough. And praise the name of the Lord your God that has dealt wondrously, wonderfully, uh, cheerfully with you. And my people shall never be ashamed. And ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel, and that I am the Lord your God, and none else. And my people, and my people, and my people shall not be ashamed. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. You will be baptized in the Holy Ghost. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. And your old men shall dream dreams. And your young men shall see visions. Look up here for a moment. You know, dreams and visions. There are people in life. They live from day to day. What they did yesterday, they do today. What they're doing today, they're doing tomorrow. There's no dream. There's no vision. There's no goal, there's no ambition, there's no desire, there is nothing in the horizon. Everything is dark, everything is weariness, everything is, I live today, I wake up, I eat, I go to work, I come back, I eat, I sleep. Tomorrow, I wake up, I eat, I go to work, I come back and eat and sleep. I eat and sleep, I walk and sleep. No future. The Lord will give you a vision today. Why were you created? He'll give you the vision. What are you to do in life? He'll give you the vision. When there's a dream, when there's a vision, life takes on a new meaning. Life takes on a happy uh, meaning. And then, you know, I'm going for that. I'm looking for that. I'm aiming at that. And all is based on the foundation of repentance. And it says, and also in verse 29, upon the servants and upon the handmaids in those days, I will pour out my spirit. Verse 32, and it shall come to pass in your life. That whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. Whosoever today, I said, whosoever today, I said, whosoever today will call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. But it's based on true repentance. You see, is there any other kind of repentance? Can somebody say, I repent, and that's not true? Let's look at this. We're looking at Exodus chapter 9. Exodus chapter 9. You know, sometimes you find people that say, I've repented, I've repented, and yet I cannot see the times of refreshing. And sometimes we go out to preach, and those people will preach to you and say, I repent, I repent. Say, You are a sinner, I'm a sinner. Say, I turn away from my sin, I turn away from my sin. Say, I believe on the Lord Jesus, I believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And then we'll say, Now, the Lord wants you to do this. Uh, I'm not ready for that. And the Lord wants you to worship Him. I'm not ready for The Lord wants you, when well, you wake up and read your Bible and pray, I don't think I can do that. I have my own church I'm going to. 
Repentance. What's repentance? Look at this. Exodus chapter 9, verse 27. Exodus chapter 9, verse 27. Are you there? And Pharaoh said, and called for Moses and Aaron, and said unto them, what did he say? I have sinned this time. The Lord is righteous. I and my people are wicked. Ah, the man finally repented. Look at verse 34. In verse 34, it says, And when Pharaoh saw that the rain and the hail and the thunders were seized, he sinned yet more and hardened his heart. He and his servants. That's not genuine repentance. I have sinned, I have sinned. I repent, I repent. I turn away from my sin. I accept Jesus. Uh -uh. That's not it. And when the problem stopped temporarily, the man sinned yet more. Numbers chapter 22. In Numbers chapter 22, I'm reading from verse 32, Numbers chapter 22, reading from verse 32. It says in verse 32, And the angel of the Lord said unto him, unto Balaam, Wherefore, as thou smitten thine ass these three times, behold, I went out to withstand thee, because thy way is perverse before me. And they have saw me and turned from me these three times, unless they are turned from me. Surely now also I have slain thee and saved her life. Look at this. And Balaam said unto the angel of the Lord, What did he say? I have sinned. I have sinned. As he repented, no, he didn't turn back. I have sinned. Look at that verse 34. For I knew not that thou stoodest in the way against me. Now, therefore, if it displeased thee, I will get me back again. I really want to go, but won't you permit me? Okay, you can go. You see, those are the people they say they have repented. That's no true repentance. We're looking at for Samuel. For Samuel. We're reading from chapter 15, 1 Samuel chapter 15. I'm reading here from verse 13. 1 Samuel chapter 15, reading from verse 13. And Samuel came to Saul, and Saul said unto him, Blessed be thou of the Lord, I have performed the commandment of the Lord. And Samuel said, what meaneth then this bleaching of the sheep in my ears and the lowing of the oxen which I hear? And Saul said, They have brought them from the Amalekites. For the people spared the best of the sheep and of the oxen to sacrifice unto the Lord thy God. And the rest were utterly destroyed. And Samuel said unto Saul, Stay. And I will tell thee what the Lord has said unto me this night. And he said unto him, Say on. And Samuel said, When thou wast little humble in thy own sight, wast thou not made the head of the tribes of Israel? And the Lord anointed thee king over Israel. And the Lord sent thee on a journey and said, Go and utterly destroy the sinners, the Amalekites, and fight against them until they be consumed. Wherefore then didst thou not obey the voice of the Lord, but didst fly upon the spoil, and didst evil in the sight of the Lord. And so said unto Samuel, Yea, I have obeyed argument argument you know the people for, to, for you to convince them to finally say okay 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 i've repented for many things to happen and for them to finally surrender takes a long time that's no repentance it says i've obeyed the voice of the lord 
and I've gone the way which the Lord sent me. And I brought Agag, the king of Amalek, and I've utterly destroyed the Amalekites, but the people took of the spoil, sheep and oxen, the chief of all the things which uh, should have been utterly destroyed to sacrifice unto the Lord thy God in Gilgal. What a good reason. Don't condemn us. What a good purpose. Don't criticize us. And don't say we've not done the right thing. We just wanted to sacrifice this to the Lord. And Samuel said, As the Lord has great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices, as in obeying the voice of the Lord, behold, to obey is better than sacrifice and to hack in than the fat of rams. For rebellion is at the sin of what? Of witchcraft. And stubbornness is as what? Iniquity and idolatry. Because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, he also has rejected thee from being king. And Saul said unto Samuel, tell me. You see that? Okay, okay, Samuel, let us pray. I have sinned. Is that repentance? No. And it says, for I have transgressed the commandment of the Lord and thy words, because I feared the people and obeyed their voice. And then Vastachi, then he said in Vastachi, tell me what he said in Vastachi. I have sinned yet honor me now. I have sinned yet honor me now. Recognize my position. Recognize my honor and my glory. Recognize my exaltation above the people. I have sinned yet honor me now. And then there are people that will say they have repented and they have believed. And sometimes that confuses some people. The Lord said, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, I will heal their land. I will forgive their sin. And then somebody says, I'm sick and then I repent. Healing should follow. And then you pray. And they are not healed. And then you say, Pastor, I'm confused. The people repented. In fact, the people believed. I gave them the word of God and they believed. And when they believed, we pray. And nothing happened. Believing is different. It's more than just saying with your mouth, I believe, I believe. Look at John. John chapter 2. John chapter 2. I'm reading from verse 23. John chapter 2, verse 23. Now when he was in Jerusalem at the Passover, in the feast day, many believed in his name when they saw the miracles which he did. Verse 24, tell me. Are you there? Verse 24, read it aloud. But Jesus did not commit himself unto them because he knew all men. I believe, I believe, I repent, I repent. The repentance must be genuine from the depth of your heart. And the believing must be genuine from the depth of the heart. Look at chapter 6 of John. John chapter 6. I'm reading from verse 15. John chapter 6, verse 15. But when Jesus therefore perceived that they were come and take him by force to make him a king, he departed again into a mountain alone. And eventually they looked for him and they saw him. And then they said, Master, Rabbi, look at verse 25. And when they had found him on the other side of the sea, they said unto him, Rabbi, when camest thou hither? We'll be looking for you. We'll believe in you. Look at verse 60. After I now began to tell them the truth. Many 
therefore of his disciples when they had heard this said this is an hard saying tell me who can hear it you see they said this is, this is a hard saying you know some people are asking us we go to them we preach to them they believe they repented and they asked the Lord to come into their hearts and then we ask them to come to the church and then they begin to say this and that about the doctrine, about the Bible. Shouldn't we repackage our message? Shouldn't we change the message so that all these hypocrites can come in? So that all these fake, fake believers can come in. Shouldn't we change and re-examine what we're preaching, the word of God, and tailor it and kind of alter it so that all those fake people will come in. But 60 again, many therefore of his disciples, when they heard this, said, this is an hard saying, who can hear it? Verse 66, from that time, tell me, if you are not fake, if you are not hypocrite, if you are, if you are genuine, any genuine person here in the house today, genuine, going to heaven, who have repented, and you believe the Lord with all your heart, where are you there? Okay, okay, if that's you, look at verse 66 and read it aloud. From that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. What did Jesus do? Did he repackage the message? Alter the message? Change it? Did he apologize to them? Hey, come back. Come back. Is it what I said? Is it what I preached? That is making you go away? There are too many going away, and there are too few staying behind. All right, now forget what I preach. I cancel that one. What do you want to hear? Then he repackaged. Did Jesus do that? No, we're not going to do that. The word of God is real. The arm of the Lord is strong and mighty. And the arm of the Lord can do wonders and miracles on one condition. There is genuine repentance. Look at verse 67. Then said Jesus to the twelve, what did he say? Will ye also go away? Then Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the word of eternal life. And we believe and we're sure that thou art that Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus said unto them, Have I not chosen you twelve? Tell me what follows. Even there was one still hiding there, still sneaking in. And one of you is a devil. I will not be a devil. I said, I will not be a devil. You see, genuine repentance, true repentance is what brings the blessing. By the way, by the way, what's genuine repentance? It's repentance coming from the heart. Not just from your lips, I've sinned. Not just from your head, I'm thinking what he wants to hear, I'll tell him. It's without any hypocrisy. There's conviction. There's a feeling that this is wrong. True repentance comes out of revelation. The revelation of the word of God, like light shining in the darkness of your heart. True repentance comes from conviction conviction and that conviction comes upon you there is hatred for sin 
You see sin in its true representation. How do you see sin to repent? You see sin as Satan's agent with curse and expulsion from glory. The sin is coming, it's representative of Satan and is to expel you from the garden of Eden. When you see sin like that, you repent. You see sin as a subtle serpent ready to sting and to kill you. He wants to sting you. That sin wants to kill and destroy your spiritual life. You see sin as a deceptive Delilah bent on destroy you to take away your strength, to take away your sight, to take away your power, to take away your glorious position. When you see sin like that, as deceptive Delilah, wanting to destroy you, your repentance will be genuine. You see sin as a trap. You see sin as a snare to catch you, to condemn you, and to consign you to hell, fire forever and ever. That's the agency of sin. That's the purpose of sin. Sin comes so that he'll catch you unawares, condemn you, and then consign you to hellfire. You see, sin as poison, percentage as sweet honey. Look at that bottle. They put a good label on it. There is poison inside. And they want to advertise it. And they want to show it in some glamouring colors so as to tempt you, entice you to drink it and die. When you see sin like that as poison that is presented as if it was sweet honey, you run away from that sin, you repent. You see sin as a pretending demon acting as an angel of light, working for Satan to destroy and damn your soul in hell. You see sin as a secret seducer. You see your own desires to destroy you. You see your own desires to cancel your dignity. You see your own desires to spoil your destiny. When you see sin and it's revealed to you with real conviction, that betrayal repentance. What's repentance? Repentance is hatred for sin. I didn't know that that thing wanted to destroy me. I was smiling. I was getting near me. Was getting me interested. Now I see the real aim. And therefore, now that I know repentance means I hate the sin. I turn away from the sin. I then close the door against that sin. I have contempt and dislike for the sin. See, if you don't have contempt and dislike for the sin, to say, I repent and repent, that's not true. That's not true. You must have contempt and dislike. You have separation, detachment from that sin. That's repentance. There's a cutting the cord of association with that sin. You make an impassable gulf between you and the sin that you're not passed on to the sin and the sin will not pass on to you. That's true repentance and that true repentance will bring great things in your life in Jesus' name. Somebody should have said amen. Look at Psalm 51. Psalm 51, here's true repentance. Psalm 51, I'm reading here from verse 1. Have mercy upon me, O God. According to thy loving kindness, according to the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity. Cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my transgressions, and my sin is ever before me. No excuse making. No giving of any excuse to say, I did this because of that. So and so lured me into that. So and so deceived me into that. No, not at all. Look at verse 4. 
against thee. Thee only have I seen and done this evil in thy sight, that thou mightest be justified when thou speakest, and be clear when thou judgest. Behold, I, he forgot his position, he forgot his dignity. He came before the Lord and said, Behold, I was shaped in iniquity. In sin did my mother conceive me. Behold, thou desirest truth in the inward parts. In the hidden parts, thou shalt.